This editorial was prepared by J.M. Thiongo, and it is being narrated by Bongu Masheri Fred. Find more of these videos in my YouTube channel, Bongu Masheri Fred YouTube, and you may find more than 1,000 videos. Today I want to look at how to pass physics practical. This paper is given the code 232 stroke 3, that's paper 3, which is a practical. And whenever we are doing this paper, we are given instructions that they appear on the front cover of the paper, whereby we are supposed to write our name, index number, in the spaces that I provided. We sign and write the date. It looks like it's common, but it may not be common it shows us that we are prepared for the paper whenever we do these rituals. And then we are supposed to answer all the questions in the question paper that is provided. So most important, the first 15 minutes in this paper, we are allowed to read the whole paper carefully before commencing your work and confirming your apparatus. So these first 15 minutes of just reading through the whole paper before working and confirming on your apparatus. Marks are given for clear record of observation actually made, all the suitability and accuracy, and for the use for them. I'm going to expound on it later. We are supposed to record observations as soon as they are made. So don't make observations, then come to record them later. Now, the significance of the practical is that it determines the quality of the final grade. A candidate cannot score a mini grade of a C plus and above in physics unless you score a D plus in the practical. Therefore, it takes two hours and 30 minutes to earn a maximum of 40 marks. Let me expound on the meaning. Let's say we have students here. I have three cases. Case one. The student gets 60 in paper 1, 60 in paper 2, and 30 in paper 3, totaling to 150. When you divide by 2, the student gets 75, which is an A plane. Case 2, a student gets 70 in paper 1, 70 in paper 2, but in paper 3, this student fails and gets 10. The total is 150, and the score is 75. But this student cannot score beyond a C plus because the student has failed in paper 3. Yet you have 75 as your score. Case 3, I have a student who has scored 40. He has scored 35 in paper 2 and 25 then he scores 50 gets a C plus the same as the one who had 75 but fell in paper 3 that's what I meant in the, in the earlier statement that a student cannot go above a C plus if you, you cannot score at least a D plus in the practical What does this paper three entail? It may cover any part of the syllabus, but the common areas 
we have mechanics we have electricity optics dynamics that is thermodynamic dealing with temperature change and what is this that is tested in the physics paper 3 Physics practical tests the candidate's ability to follow instruction and to reason logically, solve tasks, and make numerical scientific conclusions. So those are the simple questions that are being tested. Are you able to follow instructions? That's the key. Are you able to reason logically? Can you be able to solve some tasks and make some numerical scientific conclusion? The requirement that are needed in a practical, they include but not limited to a complete geometrical set, a 30 centimeter clear standard clear the word standard and the clear because if your meter or your meter your ruler is not clear you may not be able to draw a fine graph we have a thin felt pen it may not be necessary but it is good manners you have it a dark smooth pencil a standard calculator a ballpoint pen so if you are serious doing our practical ensure you have the following as a student so the first 15 minutes you read through the paper without touching any apparatus. When you are collecting your data, do it while standing. Don't do it while seated. You may, ne may not be able to manipulate. Your hands may not be free to manipulate the apparatus if you are seated. So collect data while standing and then sit to use the data. And remember I've said, I have more than 500 videos in my YouTube channel, Bongo Michelle Fred. Subscribe to watch. Now, in a practical, you are provided with a set of apparatus and instruments and a diagrammatic representation of the setup. The instructions are, are in a very simple language, so you are supposed to follow the instruction logically to set up and ensure all the connections are tight. I'm going to show you the type of connections we have in the lab. For electrical circuits, ensure that their connections are tight. So the word tight is very crucial because when your connection are loose, your data may not be accurate. Close the switch to confirm. Before you start collecting data, first confirm if the circuit is working. So confirmation is key. Read the meters provided on the collect scale Choose the scale first. All connections in parallel, all connections in parallel are to be done last. I'm going to show you how. So in any connection, ensure that any parallel connection is done the last. Collection of data, how do we do it? This involves the use of a measuring instrument to make observations or measurements which are suitable and accurate. 
the measurements taken must be in the accuracy of the measurement, uh, measuring instrument provided. Each instrument has its own accuracy. However, some conventions may be required later. Marks are always awarded for a clear record of accurate observation in the table. Clear and accurate. The measurement taken must be presented in the appropriate or stated units with no repetition. The designated instrument must be the one used. Any calculation done to fill the table must be at least four significant figures. The common measuring instrument or the common quantities we obtain is length, time, the angle, temperature, current, voltage, blind depth, weight, mass, volume, and sometimes diameters. For instance, the common tool we use is a meter rule. The accuracy of a meter rule is to one decimal, 0 0.1 centimeters. For example, in this meter rule, it is 36.6 centimeters. You cannot give two decimals. It is one decimal place accuracy. This is 20.0 centimeters, not 20 centimeters. So we must state the accuracy in a practice. Remember, this is not a theory paper. It is a practical paper. Some skills we attained at Form 1 on how to obtain the reading, how to observe and avoid the error of parallax. I'm not going to emphasize that one because it is a skill. We have a vernier caliper. It has an accuracy of 0 0.01 centimeters, two decimal place accuracy. We also have a micrometer screw gauge, an accuracy of 0 0.01 millimeters. Most of us students, we confuse the SI unit for calibers, which is centimeters, with that of a micrometer, which is in millimeters. We have a stopwatch. The accuracy of a stopwatch is two decimal places. So you cannot do a practical and obtain time as 10 seconds, yet you have used a stopwatch. A stopwatch accuracy is 0 0.01 seconds. So it is, for this case, is 32 0.81 seconds, no rounding to the nearest second, unless stated. But if you are using a stopwatch as the one in the photo, give an accuracy of 0 0.01 second, which is two decimal places. A measuring cylinder is just like a meter rule the calibration or divisions, therefore it is to one decimal place and take care of the meniscus. Observe the way the eye with the parallax error and the one without the error. When we measure volume, sometimes we may also use this uh, when we want to, depending on the question, you may use the measuring cylinder to obtain the volume of an irregular object. The burette accuracy is to, sometimes it's one decimal place, but if you want to include the second decimal place, it must be either zero or a five. We have a thermometer, just the calibration to one decimal place. Now, 
although we are doing a practical, there are some skills that we borrow from the theory part. Whereby, if it's current, we don't confuse how we obtain the series connection, the parallel connection. There are some formulas which we use. For example, if it is series and then we have resistors, we just have their sum direct, resistor 1 plus resistor 2. If it is parallel connection, we take the addition of the reciprocals. We also have some formulas for finding current, frequency, period. Also, the formula for optical, that is the real of apparent sign incidence divided by the sign reflected, refracted, and then we have finding the y m x plus c also we have conversions one meter to millimeters amphias to milliamphias so these are some of the basic skills that you'll be combing yourselves on as you prepare for this paper there are some gadgets that we use we have the ameter it has a scale of two decimal places. We have a voltimeter, a milliameter. Familiarize yourself with these gadgets and then know how to obtain the reading through practice. Here is a summary of the minimum accuracy required. I've talked about the meter rule 0 0.1, vernier calipers to take the length 0 0.01, a micrometer length 0 0.01 millimeters, a meter 0 0.01 amphias, voltimeter 0 0.01 voltage. We have the thermometer 0 0.0, 0 0.5, protractor the same 0 0.0, 0 0.5. Electric balance 0 0.1 gram. Then we have what we call an electric circuit. This is a, a, a very simple electric circuit. Somebody may want you to connect. So we have here the amphias, the voltmeter, and the load. We have also the, the cells. Whenever we do such a connection, that is the connection from the circuit we have seen. But when you look at this connection, some students find it difficult to come up with this connection. I'm going to highlight on how to do it first. So if you are doing this connection, as I said earlier, put your cell let me draw it here. Let me use a, a red one. This is a cell. Start with a cell. Here we have from the cell holder, this is the positive part and negative part. Then don't even put the wires. Put your ammeter here. This is your ammeter. Then we have the load, can be a resistor, can be an inductor. Now, what you have done here, you have placed the three gadgets that are in series. Remember we said anything in the parallel is done last. So once you have placed them on the bench, the way they appear on the circuit diagram, then connect now using the wires. That is, you connect the wire to the resistor. From the resistor, we go to the ammeter, choosing the appropriate scale, and then another wire from the ammeter to the cell. So you have connected the series part. Then you have the voltimeter, which is either can be below, anywhere, as long as it is parallel. This is the, our voltimeter now here. 
So this voltmeter can be connected anywhere parallel to the our load which is by that you have connected the parallel connection last after you have done the series connection. We also have other gadgets that we use to measure mass. We have the beam balance, the electronic balance, and the spring balance. We go to the drawing of the graph. The vertical and the horizontal axis will be stated. The horizontal and the vertical axis must be labeled and accompanied with the units. A well-stated title may also serve for the axis. For the scale, it should be symbol and a uniform. Scales with multiples of 3, 7, 11, 13, 17 should not be used because they are complex. Do not break the axis. For instance, unless you are sure that the intercept is not required. Sometimes we are told to break if the scale is too large. Unless you are sure that the intercept is not required, do not break the intercept, the axis. Very large and small values may be written in standard forms. Plotting should be done as accurate as possible. And then, it's good manners, you use an X. And the plotting should be smaller than one small square but clear. Don't make your X bigger than the small square that the X is outside. The work looks terrible and horrible. Is, now, sometimes, once you obtain the quantities or the data, we do not know whether it is going to be a graph or a curve. So for you to know whether your graph is a line, a straight line or a curve, consider the equation that you follow after the table. If the equation to f is find the slope or the gradient of the graph, find the slope, then the graph is a straight line. You are finding a slope or the gradient. The graph is automatic a straight line. But if you are supposed to find a slope at a given point, that is a curve. So the equation will guide you. If now you are drawing a line or a curve, it should pass through at least two thirds of the correct plots. I repeat here, consider the equation that you follow, that if you are finding the slope of the graph, then that is a straight line. But if you are drawing, you are going to find a slope at a given point that is a curve. For instance, I'm having a curve here of extension against the force. You see, the way the line looks smart. Look at the way it is labeled. Look at the way the axes are clear and the scale looks decent. Then here I'm having a line for the first one is a line through this, the point is a, a slope, finding the slope of a curve. And the second one is finding the gradient at a point. That's when you are supposed to draw a graph. So you find a tangent. Now, how do we find the gradient? The guideline used to find the gradient must be shown. The guideline should be drawn on accurate points. 
and the values must be read off accurately. The gradient calculation must take the format y minus y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x2. Must. The gradient may or may not have units. If it has units, they must be shown. So there you'll be guided by the equation. The gradient might be positive or negative, depending on the shape of the gradient of the line. How do you evaluate another question? The values obtained in the measurement of gradient evaluations and the y-intercept may be used to evaluate other quantities. The values must be substituted as they are without any approximation. You obtain the values from the graph, do not approximate, substitute as they are. The evaluated values must be with the units, if applicable. I'm having a table here and how a table is being marked. However, I'm reminding you, I, am, I have other videos for other subjects like chemistry, other topics, paper one, paper two, paper three. Subscribe to Bongo Michel Fred YouTube channel for other videos. Now here we are having the marking scheme. I have made it called the examiners. And then here I'm having a student. The examiner's answer, the, it is 23, 18.17.21, 16.15, blah, blah. And the accuracy was to 0 0.01, 0 0.50. So the student obtained 23.40. Because it's within this accuracy, the student gets the mark. The second, the same. But going to the third data quantity obtained, it is beyond. Because if I add 0 0.5, the maximum positive the student was to get in this column was 17.71. Because now it is beyond the examiner's marking scheme, so the student will lose this mark of by getting penalized. The other data, they are correct, meaning in this row, the student loses one mark whereby one quantity obtained was beyond the examiner's. We go to the second table. The student gets, is supposed now, to get the period by dividing the answer got in the time divided by the divided by the divided by 10 I don't it was having um, uh, the distance divided by period the time for one oscillation therefore the student was to divide each answer obtained divided by 10 because it was having 10 oscillations so the first one 2.3 is correct the third 1.8 the third one the student had missed by having a poor or a wrong entry, but because the division is correct, the student will not be penalized twice. So the first penalty holds, and the second one, the student will score. When to the fourth, the student had got the answer, 15.88, but coming to finding the period, the student got the good answer, but the student forgot to maintain the decimal place and truncated or eliminated some other values and they came up. Remember, you are supposed to give four significant figures. But no, here the student has given three. Therefore, the student loses even though the previous answer was right. You see, now this is like doing a mistake in an exam. Going to the last row, the student had got the first answer, that's 23.40, got the next answer, period, 2.340, but the last one squaring, the student went ahead and square and eliminated the four seven figures as written one, two. The student will lose this because of not following the instruction of filling the table. 
So in this case, 5.4 may be the answer, the right answer, the correct answer, but it's not following the instructions. So these students will lose this mark. And going to the fourth, 2.55, the student has lost the previous 1.58, but now during squaring, he, the student now writes the correct one with get again. So sometimes it's not about getting the right answers, it's about writing correctly. So let us avoid such a menial, minute mistakes which cost us a lot of marks. Remember we said this is the paper which will determine your final grade. Here we have a graph that was drawn of the values obtained. Look the way the graph is. It is T against X centimeters. That's the graph obtained. Let us look at case two. Case two, we have the length. 0.32 student loses the others the student gets because the first length the students ignored it is the student writes two decimal places other quantities written in three decimal places going to the second whereby this was to get the was to divide it by the length finding the reciprocal the quantity number one, the student may get wrong, but due because of the proper division in the second row, the student gets. But going to the fourth one, whereby look at the quantity 20, 0 0.05. Remember this quantity is like writing 0. Point, we don't have other decimals which are having bigger numerals. We have a zero. But you have to accurately maintain the decimals. Then the student goes ahead to draw the graph. Your teacher will explain to you how the graph is marked later. But because of time, I want to end this uh, narration here and invite you for more in my YouTube channel, Bongo. Bongo, type Bongo. my share Fred YouTube channel you will find more detailed videos YouTube you find more detailed videos on other topics then go to the playlist online teacher thank you for listening welcome